Welcome, True Lighters. Welcome, True Light Nation. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. June the 21st, 2020 is a day that we've never seen before and perhaps a day that we will never ever see again. But it is the day that the Lord has made. We rise to give honor to God our Father, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, and to the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. He who rules, reigns, and regulates. He who actually governs, guards, and guides all of our lives. Welcome to Embrace the Future service of the True Life Baptist Church live from the sanctuary located 47 Anderson Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia, a church where miracles really happen. Thank you so much for your presence, your participation. Thank you for your patience along with your prayers. Join us as we worship the Lord because he seeketh such to worship him. Here is our call to worship. Give to the Lord the glory he deserved. Bring your offering and come to worship him. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Here is our call to action. It is the vision, mission statement of the True Light Baptist Church. It is how we make our decision that ultimately determines our direction, duration, and destination. The vision, mission statement. Evangelize the world, educate the saints, edify the body of Christ, embrace the future. TLBC's mission is to inspire people to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness through preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to unbelievers, teaching the word of God to believers, and building ministries that will impact the needs and encourage the growth of the individual, the family, the church, and the community. Are you ready to worship? Are you ready to give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise? Join me as our minister of music lead us in a brief praise song and worship the Lord with me. Father's Day. 
And one of the things I love more than anything is being a father. I am grateful and thankful for my daughters, and I try to work as hard as I can to be the best possible, the best father that I could possibly be. And so I'm always excited every year about Father's Day. We certainly honor our mothers who certainly deserve to be honored. They deserve all the praise, but along with it comes the Father. And I'm excited today. We're going to uh, sing Happy Father's Day in just a minute, but I got to tell you about fathers because I am a father and I enjoy being a father. I go to restaurants every year wearing a tuxedo. Sometimes the waitress or waiter asks, what's the special occasion? I proudly leaned back in my chair and said, it's Father's Day. And so uh, many of you like me, if you were to go and eat, we can't go out and eat this year, but we could get uh, a, a seated restaurant and walk up and without reservation. On Mother's Day, that's a different issue. But this day is Father's Day. We're excited about it. I hope you're wearing a flower like I am. White flower means that your father has passed. Don't worry, my white flower got a little couple of dots in it. But all is good. I love my dad anyway. <laughs> so, so, so I just want you to know what the Bible said in terms of father. Honor thy father and thy mother. It's the first commandment with promise that thy days may be long upon the earth. And so I want you to realize how important it is to honor your father regardless of the situation or circumstances, how challenged you may be in terms of whether or not your father has been of good to you or not. The blessing comes in your obedience and honoring him. So whatever you do, whatever you do, send a text, whatever you do, make a call and perhaps a card or something, but honor your father on this day. It is an exciting day and I'm glad about it. Thank God that he made me a father. Amen. So, so with that thought in mind, want to uh, bless all fathers, all fathers, all over the place. Stand wherever you are. Hold your head up. Poke your chest out. And be glad that you're a father. Make sure that you do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> but hold your head up. Poke your chest out. And we are about to bless you now as we sing Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day. Happy so excited. God bless you. Did I mention that today is Father's Day? Oh, oh yes, I did. God bless you. Today is Father's Day, and I am so excited about it. Congratulations to all fathers. I want you to know that we are about to sing Happy Father's Day to you. Never mind. I didn't lose my mind. I was just kidding. I'm just excited. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise to all fathers. God bless you. Remember to govern yourself to all the announcements. Remember to practice the CDC requirements in terms of social distance. Make sure that you wash your hand as frequently as possible, wearing the mask and other things of that nature. Uh, I thought and contemplated in terms of when we would reunite. Trust me, it would not be anytime soon. On this past week, the numbers increased uh, in terms of those who are impacted by uh, 
uh, coronavirus. And so we will not move until the Lord through the Holy Spirit tells us to move. And so you pray uh, for your pastor and you pray for the church at large. But I am grateful and thankful for those who work behind the scene that causes you and I to connect via social media, via this virtual service. My executive producer and those who intercede through prayer, thank you so very much. Let me say this before I move to the offering. True light, true lighters, true light nation, I want you to know that I pray for you. I pray for you every single day. And I know that God is blessing you. I want you to know that I love you and there is nothing that you can do about it. God bless you, heaven smile upon you. And if no one told you today, let me be the first to tell you that I love you. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry. Thank you so much for partnering with us. Thank you so much for the work that you are doing, the gifts that you give. Uh, thank you so much. With that thought in mind, it is giving time. It is giving time. And we are excited about it. Would you join me in our giving? You can download the app, Givelify, hashtag, the true light Baptist Church dot org or easy tithe. You can give electronically or you can mail your tithes and offering in to the True Light Baptist Church located 47 Anderson Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia, 30314. You can drop it by in a secured stationary mailbox. We will pick it up and process it immediately. But I want to thank you so much for your gifts and for you believing in the ministry here at the True Light Baptist Church. We seek to be good stewards over that which God has enabled us to manage, and God is doing a great thing here at True Light. So, if you would, take an opportunity and give now. As our musician gives us a little worship and giving music, would you take the time to give this morning? God bless you. to his word, I prayerfully and cheerfully give my tithes and offering. I release my faith and finances to support my church, TLBC, so that all ministries will flourish, new facilities will be built, and our vision will be established in the earth. I believe that as I sow seeds to establish the vision of your house, dear Lord, you will establish my house. I bless you for blessing the health of my body, the soundness of my mind, and the quality of my relationship. I honor you for the divine favor that you will bring into my life. In Jesus' name, shout amen. God bless you. Thank you for your giving. I also want you to prepare your hearts for prayer. It is so important that we uh, embrace the power of prayer more now than ever before with the challenges that our nation facing our state, the city is facing with the uh, challenges of this pandemic in the midst of uh, social justice and protesting, that I uh, am on the side of the protester, not on the side of the criminal acts, but on the side of the protester, and that uh, righteousness and justice would be served. And I am grateful for our young people standing up, speaking up, and marching and calling for uh, reform and for change. And I believe in my heart, change is going to come. Some people still wondering what, but what if, what if there had not been any marching, even in the 60s? What if there had not been any marching in 2020? Where would we be even today? So I thank God for our young people. And I ask that you would pray for them as I do for their safety and their success. Join me in a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we bless and honor you because you're not just our God and we're your people, but you're our Father and we're your children. Thank you for loving us unconditionally. 
Thank you for warmly embracing us into your royal family. That now, God, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. God, without you, we can do nothing. So we thank you for your faithfulness, your kindness, your grace, your mercy. God, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, created us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us. Our thoughts, our intents, our words, as well as our action. Thank you for forgiveness. God, we pray for our nation as a whole. God, we pray for our state, our city. We pray for our community. We pray for the body of Christ, individuals that may be suffering physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, relationally, and most of all, spiritually. Touch them now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Wrap your loving arms around them. Hold them, hug them, help them in the name of Jesus. Move every mountain that has risen in our life. Lift them up, those who have sunken into the valley of depression and despair. Lead us, guide us, direct us in the way that you would have us to go. We pray for our young people as they protest that you would grant unto them safety and success. We pray, God, that change would come and that righteousness would roll down like a mighty stream. We pray that uh, justice will be served uh, for those families who have been impacted, those who have lost loved ones. God, I pray that you will comfort them even during their hour of bereavement, strengthen them. God, we pray for reform. We pray for change. We pray, God, that you would show up and stretch out and that, God, you would uh, do what only you can do in serving justice. God, we forever will be mindful to give you the glory, honor, and the praise. Thank you for replacing our sorrow with joy. Thank you for giving us strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. You are the God of our weary years. You are the God of our silent tears. You have brought us safe thus far. You alone will lead us until we meet you again. In the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. Let every heart shout amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Our minister of music would give, give us a song of preparation and we're coming back for the word for today. A word that would encourage your heart and bless you. A word for all fathers as well. Join me in Exodus as we seek to share a word from the Lord. God bless you.
Verse 15, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. I would like to tag this particular text with a topic and the title, A Black Man with a Plan. A black father with a plan. Father, we thank you for your word. Send your anointing and speak to and through your servant that those who are listening near and far lives would be transformed. God, that the sound, under the sound of my weak voice, your anointing would be so powerful that it would do transformation. Thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. A man with a plan, a black man with a plan, a black father with a plan. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of protesting, in the midst of the call for police reform, in the midst of the need for the political change and the climate that we're currently facing, it is incumbent upon us to have a plan and one of the most lethal weapons a man can have is a plan. A man armed with a basic battle plan to do business is a dangerous man. He's not only a dangerous man, but he's a determined man. He's a man of destiny. One who knows what he wants to do and to be in life. He knows where he is going and how he will get there. One who has a map and a method. A man with a plan has a strategy and a scheme. A black man, a black father with a plan has a diagram and a design that has been developed in advance of the action. One who has faith and is greatly to be feared. In fact, brothers, just a little inside information, a woman love a man with a plan. Women love men that have a plan, especially if you have a self-plan, especially if you have a family plan, especially if you have a financial independency plan, especially if you have a health care plan, especially if you have a business plan, a house floor plan, a pension plan, a life insurance plan, as well as a future plan. Because the blind cannot lead the blind. She wants what is called a BMW, a black man working. Not only a black man working, but a BMW is a black man worshiping. One who is in love with the Lord because he knows that the Lord is love, in love with him. One who understands that God has a plan for him and he has a plan for those who are depending on him. Here is what a plan signifies. It sends a signal that you are a dreamer, that you have hopes and aspiration. It sends a signal of the ability to make decisions, that you are a decision maker, that you are a baller, that you know how to make decisions, and that you're not stuck in the middle of the road wondering, what shall I do? Where shall I go? It sends a signal of direction. It sends a signal of duration and distance that you have intact the next three to five years. Whether it go that way or not, you definitely have a plan with anticipation of it going the way that you have planned. It sends a signal of destination to women like the altar. Like ultimately, we're not just dating to have a good time, but it's going to lead to somewhere like a marriage. Somebody ought to say amen. You most likely to achieve your goal with a plan than you would if you didn't have a plan. That's why I always talk about my five P's. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Have a plan. Brothers, what really matters at the end of the day is not, here it is now, where you have been, where you come from, what all you've been through. What really, really, really matters at the end of the day is a plan as to where you're going. 
Nobody want to follow you if they're not sure that you know where you're going. So your future is greater than your past, regardless of how great and or good your past has been. Make plans to go forward. If God wanted to leave you, uh, God wanted to have you to be where you are, he would have left you where you were. But God brought you from where you were because of what he has in store for you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and neither have entered into the hearts of man the things that God has prepared for you. But God has revealed them unto us. Guess how? By his spirit. For the Spirit searches the deep things of God. So you can't have a grassroot plan, but you got to have a plan that ultimately leads to success. You cannot be stagnated, still, still, or stuck. It's time to go forward. You ought to be like my daddy told me when I asked for a car. Boy, if you put one foot in front of the other, you will ultimately reach your destination. In other words, he said, why are you still standing there? Why are you still looking for somebody to give you something? Go forward. Have a plan. Make the best of what you have. The plan in life ought to always to be to progress, to prosper, to ultimately be successful. Herein lies the primary premises of our preaching for today. As a plan to transition without transformation will lead to a costly tragedy. But a plan, hear this now, with transition and transformation will lead to continuous triumph. Transitioning outwardly and not transforming inwardly will cause you and I to end up in a worse predicament from the original. So here's what the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may present what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The change has to come on the inside. Stop trying to change the outside and you never change on the inside. Before God does a work through you, brothers, he first must do a work in you. Somebody ought to shout amen. So when I look at the research background and the backdrop of this biblical text, it shares with us of the children of Israel were in bondage and under burden of the slavery of the Egyptians for 430 years. They were oppressed. They were depressed. They were suppressed. They were facing a recess and their condition to the, in their condition to the place and point that they had forgotten their position. In other words, who they were. They were a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And that's where some of us have been. We've been down for so long. We've been without for so long. We've been challenged. The other day, the other day, just Friday, we celebrate June, uh, Juneteenth. Why? Why? Because for years we had been uh, released in terms of slavery for years the Emancipation Proclamation had been signed and we did not even know that we were free. And many of us are there today, not in terms of physically, but our mindset is enslaved to only think of the past. The children of Israel had been down so long that they did not even know what it meant to be free. They did not have a destin destiny in mind. They just wanted deliverance. And God sent them a deliverer with a destiny in mind. Let me explain to you the difference. Because wherever God brings us out of something, it is with the purpose of taking us into something. Some of us are just so glad to get out. We're not looking forward to going in. Deliverance brings us out, but obedience takes us in. I want to share with you today that whenever God has an exit strategy. He always have an entrance plan. Boy, y'all gonna make me shout, amen, but it's Father's Day. I can't work. I can't sweat. I can't do it today. I can't, I got, I gotta go and eat. I got something to do, but I want to share with you today that whatever God bring you out, don't just be satisfied of coming out of segregation. Don't be just satisfied with coming out of slavery. Don't just be satisfied 
with a job, God said, I got great things in store for you. God said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. God said, I got a plan for your life, and the plan is to prosper you and not to harm you. Can I tell you that your best is yet to come? Hold your head up, fathers. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You are somebody. God created you to be more than what you are. Not to be a deadbeat, but to be a provider, to be a protector, to be a preserver and a priest of your household. A black man with a plan, a black father with a plan is somebody. Let me share with you today, let me share with you today just a couple of thoughts from the content of the text, and then I'm out of your way. My, my, my daughters are waiting on me to celebrate. I got to go, I got to go. But let me tell you four things you got to deal with if you're going to have a plan. The first thing you got to deal with is the past. You got to deal with the past. Can I tell you you got to deal with the past? But if we don't deal with our past, whenever you move forward, it'll come up again. You can't ignore it. You can't act like it doesn't exist, but you got to deal with it. Here's the reason why. They, they came out of Egypt, but Egypt was still in them. Some of us have come out of what we've gone through, but what we've gone through is still in us. I'm saying that if God bring you out of, stand still and let God bring out of you what has been in you so that when he take you forward, he don't want to take you forward with the junk that is still in you. You still mad. You still mad. You still mad because of what your dad did or did not do. You still mad because of what happened to you when you were a little boy. Can I tell you, you got to hear this now. You got to realize that whatever has happened in your past, number one, you got to face it. Number two, you got to forgive it. And then number three, you got to forget it. What am I talking about? Your credit past. You got to face it, forgive it, and forget it. Your criminal past. You got to face it, forgive it, and forget it. Your character past. You got to face it, you got to forgive it and then forget it. Here's number two. Deal with the past. Here's number two. For whatever you don't slay as a youth will rise up and slay you in your old age. So deal with the past. Here's number two. Discover the Lord's plan. Can I tell you that the plan for God to have for the children of Israel or for them to go forward. Here's the reason why it was so significant that they understood that God told them through Moses to go forward. Because they had been going in circles. And that's where many of us are. We're going in circles. We're still doing stuff we did 20 years ago. We're still going back to the place that we were 20 years ago. We're still trying to hang out with the people that, Lord, help me in here. Amen. And God said, I want you to discover the plan that I have for you is to go forward. He says it in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. I know the plan that I have for you, declare the Lord, plan to prosper you and not to harm you, plan to give you a hope. I want you, here number one, find God's plan because his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Here number two, have faith in God's plan because Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will Direct your plan. Find God's plan. Have faith in God's plan. And then follow God's plan. Press toward the mark. And then finish God's plan so that at the end of the day, you can hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Brothers and sisters, hear this now. Hear this now. Deal with the past. Not only deal with the past, discover God's plan. Here's number three. Depend on the Lord's power. I know you think you know everything. I've been there. I've done that. And come to find out, I didn't even know that I didn't know until I ran into a brick wall. And then I said, I wish somebody had told me. I am trying to advise you now. I'm trying to tell you now. It's not by might nor by power, but God said by his spirit. I need you to move by the spirit of God. I need you to depend on a power that is greater than you. I know that you are all that in a bag of chips. I know how much weight you can lift. I know how many pounds you can squat. I know how many miles you can run. But it's not a physical battle that we are in doing. It's a spiritual battle. And you got to realize that the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord. And God will empower you. God will equip you. God will enable you, but he will do it at his time and his way. Why? Because God has the power to heal. 
He has the power to save. He has the power to deliver. He has the power to rescue. He has the power to change. He has the power to move. He has the power to open up doors that no man can shut and shut doors that no man can open up. Can I tell you today that God has the power and you and I must depend on his power. Do I have a witness? Here's number four, and then I close. Depart. Depart with purpose. I want you to understand that it's, 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 you've been sitting still too long. You've been waiting on a way to come and get you. You've been waiting on somebody to come and tell you what to do. But you've been sitting out too long. God told Moses to tell the people to go forward. And then he told Moses to stretch out your rod. And when he stretched out the rod, the rod, the rod, the Red Sea opened up and he was able to move in. I want to tell you that God is opening up the Red Sea so that you can go forward. You got to trust him and never doubt. And he will surely bring you out. When you go forward, go forward in God's company. Why? Because he's a very present help in a time of trouble. Go forward not only in God's company, but go forward in God's command. Why? Because if he abide in you and you abide in him, you can ask whatever you will and it shall be done. Not only go forward in God's company and God's command, but go forward in God's commission. I want you to know that the sentiments of the songwriter said a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, to never serve, never serve, to serve this present age, uh, my calling to fulfill. Oh man, and all my power engage to do my master's will. Can I get you to get up? Can I get you to stand up? Can I get you to go forward? Can I get you to be about something? Can I get you to have a plan and walk in the plan that God has given you to walk in? Because I know a man named Jesus. And God had a plan for him. And he came down through 40 and two generations. Do I have a witness here today? And he died on a cruel, ruddy cross. Hung up for our hang up. Stressed out for you and I being strung out. But he had a plan. Oh yes, he had a plan. And it wasn't just to die. Surely he died, but he didn't stay dead. That early one Sunday morning, he got up with all power. raise us up. Power to carry out his plan. Power to be everything that he wants us to be. And I tell you today, black man, you got the power. Every father, you have the power. God has given us through his son, Jesus Christ, the power to be everything he wants us to be. It's up to you. It's up to you. Let me pray for you. And then we'll sing this song. Extend, let me pray for you. And then we'll sing this song and extend an invitation. God, we thank you for the plan that you have divine and designed for mankind, and in particular, every father, every black father that has been beat down, tried upon, called out their name. God, we lift them up right now. Yet in the midst of so many challenges that we face, we know that we all we are not all that we ought to be. But God, we thank you that we're not all that we used to be. Now, God, help us to deal with our past. Help us to discover your plan. Help us, God, not only to discover your plan, but to depend on your power and to depart in purpose. To go forward and be the provider, the protector, the preserver, and the priest that you called us to be. In Jesus' name. Thank you today.
accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and ultimately for God to be your Father. We were all created in His image and after His likeness, but we are not all His children. As many as receive Jesus Christ to them, He gives the power to become the sons of God. Can I tell you that every father needs a father? And when you understand that God is our ultimate father, and as you submit to him, God will send fathers in your life, mentors, those who would love you and support you, even as a man, so that you can be a great father as you submit yourself to the fatherhood of God and those who he sent in your life. If you've never accepted Christ, would you pray this prayer with me? Dear God, I come to you, a sinner, repenting of my sins. Forgive me and give me another chance. Come into my heart, take over my life. I confess that Jesus is the Christ. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead that I may have eternal life. Thank you for you decree and declare that if I do this, I will be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear this now. I want you to join the church wherever you may be. Locally where you are, join a Bible-based, Bible-teaching, Bible-preaching church so that you can grow in the Lord and in the power of His might. We're going to sing a to-go song. I'm coming back with a blessing and a benediction. But I want you to know that I am grateful today for those who work behind the scene to make our service a success. My executive producer took the time out of a busy schedule on this weekend in celebration. And on tomorrow, she will be celebrating a great day a birthday. I'd like to give a shout out and say happy birthday tomorrow to her. But also on the other day, day before yesterday, Friday, Friday was Juneteenth. I want to say I hope that you celebrate your independence with your black self. I mean, God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Hear this fellowship song and we're coming back with a blessing.
finish the work as you promised, that you started, and we trust you that God, what you start, you will finish. Thank you in advance, in the mighty, matchless, marvelous, miracle working, majestic name of our Messiah, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Let every heart shout amen, amen, and thank you, Lord. God bless you. Never smile upon you. And I look forward to seeing you Wednesday, WWP SmackDown, 12 noon and 6 p.m. God bless you, True Lighters. God bless you, True Light Nation.